Do you see the same type of wage and price controls potentially coming her way? Um, yes. When you hold all the cards, you can make the rules. For all we know, the, um, the only goal this country has is the, um, the set of Goldfinger. You know, your bad job throwing his bowler hat. <laughs> Tim Marshner of the Coin and Stamp Shop here in Manchester, New Hampshire. I got a question for you, Tim. And it's about what it was like from an economic standpoint, and maybe politically, uh, back in the 70s, especially after 1971 when Nixon did what's known as the Nixon shock. He closed the gold window. He instituted price and wage controls. I want to hear what it was like when that happened and after that. It did one thing that was good. It brought the markets back to supply and demand. But keep in mind that he was getting bad advice. His economic advisors told him that the, if you want to stop the flight of gold, um, instead of pegging it at $35 an ounce, which it was pegged right. by, uh, I guess, uh, Roosevelt, um, they told him, just peg him at $44 an ounce and that'll stop the flight of gold. Well, he knew that wasn't true because if you if you pegged it at forty four dollars, that just means they're going to you know, European countries who want to get their gold back would just give us more paper, and um, so you know he let it float and gold went immediately up to about seventy five dollars an ounce. Uh, so, but the price controls and wage controls were because of um, it was a lot of talk about laissez faire um, economics. And Nixon was a subscriber to laissez-faire economics. But when you let the markets go, um, what happens is inflation. And I think that was, the wage controls and price controls were designed to keep inflation in check. When it got out of control, it was under the next Democrat. But the same advisor that Nixon had, that he had to get out of his cabinet, became the uh, chairman of the Fed under Jimmy Carter. One of the things that uh, Nixon touted was to buy American, and we can do that, and don't worry about the prices, this is going to be fine. He kind of quelled concerns over inflation. Well, I see the concerns for inflation rising like crazy now. We do not have the manufacturing infrastructure we did. We have just extreme levels of debt, comparatively, and inflation back then was, what is it, 5.8% or something like that. Yeah. We're going to see potentially a lot worse. We'll and do see. you see the same type of wage and price controls potentially coming our way? Um, if, if, we don't if we don't change the, um, the makeup of Congress, yes. Uh, because they don't care about spending. They don't care about reining it in. Greenspan said when it comes to paying um, uh, retirement benefits, Social Security, that we can always pay the required amount for Social Security. But what that currency will buy and the value of that currency, we cannot guarantee. I think we should maintain the principles of Social Security, but I think the existing structure is not working and we have one that basically moves cash around and we can guarantee cash benefits it's far out and at whatever size you like but we cannot guarantee their purchasing power yeah isn't that amazing <laughs> it is you know speaking as someone who is uh, receiving social security benefits um it's a pittance my real estate taxes are twelve thousand a year um, because I have the store, I have another place that my son lives in, in, in my house. So I'm paying $12,000 a year in real estate taxes. Um, you take that out of your Social Security benefits, and um, there's very little left. Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, there are just so many expenses that people have that they can't change. And uh, Social Security can't keep up. Uh, the Democrats, by the way, have a bill that has been filed. It's probably sitting in a broom closet and nobody wants to even talk about the fact that it's there. Um, because you 
never paid uh, taxes on the money you put into a 401k or an IRA, um, they will somehow combine that with your social security benefits um, you know, when, they, when they start to run out. You're saying they're gonna play games with that completely. They're gonna tack that on and cover that by um, virtue of the amount of social security benefits you receive in the they'll, future. They'll get a little more creative about the Roths, no question <laughs> about it. But uh, just keep in mind, when you hold all the cards, you can make the rules. I forget the uh, Senator right now, but I'll, I'll definitely show it here on the video. Um, but he's basically filed another um, bill to have the gold audited uh, in our reserves. I, know, I have heard some rumblings about that. Yeah, but, uh, I, I don't it's think probably never gonna happen. it's probably going to get killed in committee. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all we know, the, um, the only gold this country has is the, um, the set of Goldfinger. You know, good odd job throwing his bowler hat. Yep. That's it. That's it. That's all we've seen. I think price and wage controls like the 70s is I, in our future. Yeah, I wouldn't be at all surprised, but um, keep in mind things were very different back then. Uh, the, the largest driver of inflation since the Nixon years has been energy. And, um, you know, that's no longer in check. Um, you know, up around, what, $74 a barrel now. Uh, that's that's causing part of it. Mm. Um, the uh, poor farmers that, um, you know, the administrations have not supported over the years. And mm. you, once you change an administration, everything goes out the window. And I think we're about to see a serious round of inflation. Yeah, there are a lot of things that are very similar in this real estate market to 2007, 2008. A lot of things, especially you know, banks aren't going out there setting the mortgages. They're they're passing that business on to mortgage brokers, mm -hmm. and uh, mortgage brokers don't have to follow the same rules that the bank does. So they're they're putting together a lot of these um, junk bonds <laughs> based on yep. on mortgages. Everybody yep. should go see the Big Short. the The economy is so big and so complicated. Unfortunately, we have a Congress that. You know, they, it hurts their heads to think about it, so they don't. They just keep going day-to-day -day business. You know, the Republicans are saying, well, we can't spend this much, and the Democrats are saying, well, we're going to spend more. And uh, there's an end game, but I, I think the, the roof's going to come crashing down. I really do. That's why I just bought another tube of Canadian maples, man. <laughs> Thank you for this. You keep raiding the coin shop. <laughs> Not leaving anything for anybody else. Oh, that's not true. No, you, you, can, you can show what I brought in today. Oh, oh, yeah, I know, right? You walked in with this, helped you out a little bit carrying this in. This is impressive. And it's all spoken for, or most of it? About half of it is spoken for. Wow. Yeah, it's another in the neighborhood of 1,100 ounces, and it'll be gone this weekend. All of it will be gone. And I've got we, we know. We know to prepare like this. There oh, yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're preaching to the choir now, and the, the, the choir is a really smart choir. I talk to them every day. <laughs> That's great, man. Thanks, Tim. Really appreciate it.